Playtonic Games, the indie studio made of ex-Rare developers, have now released their 3D platform revival game, Ukulele, and it looks amazing! Sadly, us Nintendo Switch owners will still have to wait a bit longer to get our version of the game, but in the meantime, I felt like this would be the perfect time to look back at the main games that inspired this modern classic. Ukulele is, in essence, a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. It's the Banjo 3 we waited for but never got. So let's look over some of the best levels from the original game and its sequel, Banjo-Tooie. Here are my picks for the top 10 Banjo-Kazooie levels. Number 10. Mumbo's Mountain. Where better to start off than with the very first level? Spiral Mountain is cool and all, but it feels like more of a tutorial level. Mumbo's Mountain throws you right into the main game, but at the same time it's easy enough to not be too overwhelming for new players. This level is really the game's way of saying, you're really in this now, you are looking for jiggies, musical notes, and all the other collectibles now. Here are things the training level didn't show you. This level design really makes Mumbo's Mountain the perfect opening level for this type of game. Number 9. Gobi's Valley. As tricky and dangerous as a booby-trapped ancient tomb in the middle of a desert, Gobi's Valley is a level of mystery and challenge. With its many tests of speed, careful yet quick thinking, and clue following, this level does make you feel like an explorer conquering a series of tests put in place by ancient pharaohs. Solving certain challenges also changes the placement and layout of some parts of the level, thus prompting further exploration. Plus it's got Gobi the camel himself, and magic carpets. How can you go wrong with those? Want to be a bear and bird version of the O'Connells? Come to Gobi's Valley. Number 8. Treasure Trove Cove. Nothing sets a fun summer day at the beach like this level. Who played with sandcastles as a kid? Well, in this level, it's kind of like a wild imagination at a beach come to life. Explore a pirate ship for gold, fight a giant enemy crab, go on a treasure hunt, swim away from Jaws over here. <laughs> Not only does this level have balanced and fun challenge, but it's such a perfect level to play in the summertime. But speaking of levels with a lot of water... Number 7. Jolly Rogers Lagoon. Entering this level, you step into a small port town with shops, Jolly's Bar and Inn, and a play area for little swimmers. Now, this is all charming and the music makes it more so, but then there's this large body of water just sitting there. But what lies beneath the surface is this incredible underwater kingdom, appropriately named Atlantis made more incredible by its music and visual design. Honestly, I don't know that I've ever encountered an underwater level this compelling, the closest contenders coming from Super Mario Sunshine. Solve ancient puzzles, explore these sunken temples and ships, encounter sea monsters, and play as a submarine. Simply put, Jolly Rogers Lagoon is the perfect showcase of charming level on the surface with a mysterious world of wonder underneath. And who knows, maybe our ocean is hiding secrets like this too. Number 6. Hail Fire Peaks. Like Jolly's, this is really two levels in one, but Peaks takes that idea a step further. One side is a hot, fiery volcanic land with fire-based enemies, while the other side is a frozen mountain populated by yetis. Each side has different challenges going along with the fire and ice themes, but there's also a new version of the kickball tournament here, and you can see where your old friend Boggy the Polar Bear moved himself and his family to. Looking at the size of this igloo, looks like this guy got an upgrade from Freeze Easy Peak. Games from the early eras most of all loved putting players in fire levels and ice levels. In Banjo-Tooie, you play through a level that's both. Cause you're hot and you're cold. Sorry, I had to. Number 5. Witchy World. This is a world with the theme of a carnival with no safety regulations and hostile employees. Yet for some reason people still visit apparently. It's got a mix of themes that gives it an overall haunted carnival feel which makes for an interesting atmosphere. There's some great platforming here too, but what's most impressive is how many fast-paced minigames are here. And this fits in with the carnival setting. When you're looking for carnival fun, Witchy World doesn't disappoint. Number 4. Freeze Easy Peak, the perfect holiday world. Even though Christmas is never actually said, and the level is described as more of a winter wonderland, it's obviously Christmas here. A Christmas tree, a giant snowman presence, and to top it all off, a light-hearted Christmassy tune. Even the challenges here are fun. Of course, the snowmen get annoying fast, but that just makes it all the more joyful when you take them out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you frozen from finding presents for sad children and scaling a giant snowman, to racing a polar bear across the world and defending tree lights, this level has fantastic design and the things to do in it will put any player right in the Christmas mood. Number 3. Mad Monster Mansion On the subject of holiday spirit, Mad Monster Mansion is the ideal Banjo-Kazooie Halloween world, complete with skeletons, ghosts, eerie music, and transforming into a pumpkin. It just sucks that as a pumpkin you've got to get flushed down a toilet. Ew. 
Oh hey, Konami's down here. Hi, Konami. The mansion has the majority of challenges to take on, but the rest of the world contains a lot too. The level isn't very big like Freeze Easy Peak, but it holds a lot in it. With its theme, compelling atmosphere, and honestly greater difficulty, this world is a real treat to play through on Halloween, and any other time of year, really. Number 2. Terry Dactyland. Coming back to big worlds, this world is massive, so much so that I still get lost here from time to time. But come on, who hasn't wanted to explore a dinosaur-themed world at least once in their youth? Well, that's what this world is all about. It's fun to take on this prehistoric level and the dangers within it. Getting a lot of the jiggies requires several steps too, so the adventuring becomes very engaging here. It's a world that just screams adventure. But why journey as a barren bird when well, you can be a T-Rex? That's gotta be the coolest transformation in Banjo-Tooie. Number 1. Click Clock Wood. This nature-themed world is truly unique. It's one decent-sized world surrounding this huge tree, but when you step through different doors in the entry hall, you see the same world in different seasons. And while it's true that each season presents its own visual appeal, this actually has a big effect on the gameplay. First of all, whole layouts can change, like the autumn leaves creating hills to run up, the summer drying off the river, or winter freezing the river into an ice floor and covering surfaces in slippery snow. And when you do something in one season, it changes in some way in the next season. A flower grows, you can get somewhere you couldn't last season. A house and bridges get more built. Uh, maybe it's just me, but why build the floor last in a treehouse? This world is brilliantly designed with great platforming, tasks that span all four seasons, and a beautiful aesthetic that makes for a great last level in the game. So what were some of your favorite levels from these games? Do you think Ukulele is a worthy successor? Sign off in the comments section below. Then check out my reviews of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. See you all next time!